Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing some more mirror multiplayer. So in the previous two videos, we actually made a lobby system so that you can go to a main menu, enter a name, host it or join a lobby. And then once you're in a lobby with people, you can ready up. And then finally, the lobby leader can actually press the start button, but the start game button doesn't actually do anything right now. So this video is going to be focused on actually going from them pressing that button to sending all the clients, including the leader client, through to an actual game. Now that game can be whatever you want. Over the next few videos, I'll take suggestions for what people want me to do in terms of gameplay logic. But now that we've got this set up, we can actually use this project right now how it is as kind of like a basis to build others on top of. So you can queue up into a thing and then go into a game with your friends. That game could be like Counter-Strike where you're on different teams, you know, got a round countdown and when it reaches zero, you can move. And then obviously there's another countdown for the actual game. And then when that runs out, you know, one side wins or whatever. That kind of logic, if you want to me to cover that, then let me know down below or anything else. Also, let me know down below. Hope you guys enjoy, let's get started. Okay, so this video will be split up into three parts. Part one will be the coding in the network manager and creating the new kind of player. So right now we've got what we call a room player, which stores whether they're ready or not and their username, for example. But then in the game, we might want some different data. So we do want their display name still, so we'll have that passed across. But we also want to have some different data like their score, and whatever else. Now you can technically just use one kind of player object and never change, but I feel like it's better to separate that out so we don't have one humongous script having all the logic for the player. Then for step two, we'll be setting up in Unity, we'll make a game player version of the prefab, and we'll be signing that in the network manager and just doing a few things in the Unity editor. Then finally for step three, we'll do the testing. So I'll build the game, run it as a host in the Unity editor, then on the built executable, I'll join as a client. We'll both ready up, the host will press the start game, and then once they do that, we should both move to a new scene. And obviously from there, you can do whatever you want. So as I said, let me know down below what you want to see, whether we want a spawning system and then like a round countdown system and all that kind of stuff. Let me know. The more you guys tell me down below what you want to see, the more likely I am to do it. So let me know there. It's the best way for you to get the content you want to see. Okay, so I think that's all. Let's get started. Okay, so for step one, we need to make the game player. So over here, we have the room player. I'm gonna duplicate it. Okay, now remember, this is gonna be effectively the same. It's gonna do the same job as the room player, but for during the game. So obviously during the game, you don't need to know if you're ready, there's certain things that don't happen and certain things that do happen. So in here, let's make sure to rename this to be network game player. We're gonna remove that UI we have there. I'm actually gonna get rid of the hook, but we're still gonna have the sync var because this variable should still be synced between all clients. You know, if someone joins, they want to know what you're called, but the name doesn't change during the gameplay, so I don't need any callbacks for that. And then is ready, we don't need. We don't need to know, at least at the moment, whether we're the leader or not in the game. It doesn't matter at the moment. Uh, this is still useful, so we'll keep the room thing. We don't need to do anything when we start authority, but when we start on a client, we want to add ourselves to a list, but not this list. We want to uh, add ourselves to game players, which doesn't exist yet, but we're going to make that list in a minute. Okay, and then we actually want to do the same down here, but removing. So we want to say game players don't remove this. One more thing, when we start, we actually want to do don't destroy on load. Now that means that when we're changing the scene, this game object is not destroyed. We can still destroy it manually, but we don't want to destroy it when going between levels. Because if your game is round based, now obviously it depends on what you're doing, right? If your game is round based, like mine is the one I'm working on, you know, you might have seen it on my Twitter, but anyway. Um, Whenever I go between different rounds, I don't want to have to destroy and add back the player and respawn everything in. Just just keep it there if it's going to stay. Now, maybe further in development, I'll find a reason that I want to do it differently. But for now, this makes the most sense to me. Okay. Then down here, we don't actually need pretty much any of these uh, methods. So let's just scroll up and get rid of these. What we do need is we want a method for setting the display name. Uh, so I'd set display name takes in the string display name and it sets this dot display name to be the display name okay um i didn't realize i'd made that uppercase because that doesn't need to be public that can be private and then make that lowercase okay so this dot display name equals display name and then what we want to do is uh we're going to put server here which ensures that this logic is only run ever on the server it's just like a safety catch basically it's not necessary though and then um, I think that's it for in here. So now we need to go to the actual network manager itself. So let's go to the network manager. And we need to add some more logic in here. Okay, so the first thing to do is to go to our list of room players, copy paste, and make a list of game players. And this is so that obviously when we're in the room, 
with they're all in here then when we go to the game they get removed from here and added to here now at the moment that's just an easy way to you know separate them out but it's actually quite useful because if we end up having spectators that aren't playing the game at the time we can make a list of spectator players or whatever they have they don't have a score right as a spectator you don't have a score but then maybe at the end of the round um there are only three players in the game someone's left and there's a spectator that spectator should then fill that fourth slot right if they're an extra person or maybe they do it depends on your game maybe, maybe they do maybe they don't the point is what you could do on the server is you could loop over all the spectator players and you could have the logic there to make them become a game player right to like do the same logic as when you're going from the room to the game you could go from spectator to game and join in midway it's up to you but anyway once we have our list of game players we then want to make two more methods down here so i'm going to go to the bottom and do this we're going to make a public void start game start game is going to say well if scene manager dot get active scene so if the scene we're in if its name matches the menu scene which we have from last time then if we're not ready to start uh, is ready to start if we are not ready to start then return but if we are ready to start then we're going to call this method call it server change scene okay and it wants the name now for the example here, I'm just going to go with uh, scene underscore map underscore 01. I'm going to make a scene called that just for the sake of demonstration. But obviously you'd have some logic here to pick which map to go to or something along those lines. And then I've got this other method. Okay. And this handles when we're changing scenes. So this is where you put logic for, for example, going to a game, going out of the game. So as you see here, this is going from menu to game. So if the scene that we're in right now is the menu and the new scene starts with scene underscore map it means we are going from our main menu into the game and then because you know you're doing that that's the time to go over all your room players okay and then we actually yeah we need a game player prefab so let's go up here room player prefab let's make another header for game related things so game serialize whoops field private network game player lobby game player prefab and we want to spawn that in but that's fine now so yeah when we're going from the menu to the game go through all the room players get their connection spawn in their game version of the prefab and we want to actually call that set display name method we did so the server is actually going to oh what's the problem over here can't convert network game player to okay so this is game player and apparently Yep, I didn't do this right or something. So that's a game player lobby, game player lobby. There we go. So we spawn in the prefab and then we set the display name. So now that we basically transferred the name from the room to the game player. So it's, it's gone across. And then we destroy the game object for their current identity. So it basically means get rid of their room player. And then we call this replace method, which will basically assign the new uh, game player to be that connections player rather than the old one so we have connection which is the connection to the client here we go connection to client and we're saying their player is no longer the thing we destroyed it's now this new thing we spawned in this is now them and then we do the base logic for changing a scene which is down here so now that we've got this this is actually all the logic we need so now we just need to go and set it up in unity so we've got our network room player i'm going to duplicate that so we've got our network game player prefab and we go into there and make some changes so we don't need any UI, get rid of that. And we're gonna, actually, to be honest, I could have just made a new game object, but regardless, uh, game player lobby, okay? It's it's on there, it's done. And then now, if we go to our network manager, it's got a field somewhere, a game player prefab, okay, and let's drag in the game player. So that's there. And now the only thing left is to actually make a scene for this. So wait, tutorials lobby, We've got scene lobby, let's duplicate it and call it scene underscore map underscore was it a one or was it just one let me go back to the network manager we said uh oh one okay so scene manager a one let's go to our build settings and add it to make sure it's there so add that in and then now that this scene, uh, scene exists we'll just get rid of uh what do we not need we don't need the main menu ui and we don't need the network manager and we do need the event system we'll leave that in there Okay, so now we go test it.
I of course forgot one line. If we actually go back to the room player from last time, I added a comment here to start the game. So we actually need to make this do something. So if we call room.startGame, okay. This start game method is on the server because it's a command. So obviously commands get called on the server. And then because of that, it then triggers this, which gets everything going. So now that that is done, we should go ahead and build and test it. Okay, let's give it a test. So I'm gonna go and make a lobby in the Unity editor. And then on my built version, I'm gonna confirm join okay here i am that's youtube dapper youtube dapper i'm going to ready up obviously you see it ready up on both i'm going to ready up here now i can start and then when we press start notice how we're currently in scene underscore lobby i'm now in scene underscore map 01 and the lobby has actually gone from my other client too now there's not really a good way of showing that it's worked on here but one thing we can do is if i actually stop the game and run it again and run it in both this time i'll use the executable as the host okay so this is the host ready then i go back over here i'm going to join so remember this is the client not the server and then you'll actually see we're in lobby okay let's start and now we're in c01 so it actually does work for both there we go and if you actually go into here you'll see we don't have game sorry we do have game we don't have room players anymore they've been changed to be game players so we've actually cleaned up the room player stuff and made the game players so now we can actually go ahead and actually start writing some game logic we've got players joining into a lobby and going into a game so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know down below. Leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot. Comment what you want to see next. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time and goodbye. But of course, first I got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, David McDermott, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoris Letter, Heidi Zorko, Rene, Budderay, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those, checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.